There is a fascinating and dramatic moment at the end of Shmuel Aleph that sheds light on a particular section of Parshat Vayikra. Let me explain. At the end of Sefer Shmuel Aleph, David HaMelech lives as a fugitive, running away from Shaul HaMelech, who has dispatched thousands of soldiers on a manhunt to try to have him killed. At a particular juncture, David gains not the upper hand, but at least a point where he can turn around and have a conversation with Shaul. It happens a couple of times. And on the last of those times, David asks Shaul, why do you hate me so much? Why are you coming after me? He actually asks him, Vayomer, lama ze Adoni rodef achare avdo? Why, my master, do you pursue your, his servant? What have I had? What have I done that's wrong? What is what's the wickedness here? And now Now please listen, my master the king, at the Vrei Avdo, the words of his servant. If Hashem has caused you to be stirred up against me, let's bring a mincha. And Hashem will accept it. Then he goes on to say, and if I was framed by wicked people, so then recognize that it's a libelous series of charges against me. I have no claims on the throne. I'm not trying to usurp the throne. Regardless of the fact that Shmuel Hanavi had already anointed him, David was extremely reluctant to do anything to take the reins of power because he wanted to respect Shaul HaMelech, the Melech Yisrael. The Nitziv of Volozhin uses this pasuk to understand something cryptic about Parshat Vayikra. The beginning of the Parsha is, of course, about Korbanot. And it starts with the words, Adam ki yakriv, when a person, when a human being, will offer offerings. Then it starts to list off par, parim, uh, uh, different kinds of son. So we have bakar and son. And then you have uh, b'nei torim and b'nei yona, uh, different kinds of birds. Uh, and all of those are animal offerings, obviously. And then the Torah says, v'nefesh. When a nefesh will offer a meal offering to Hashem, Rashi understands it in economic terms, uh, that the word nefesh didn't appear for other korbanot nedava, other vol volitional uh, offerings that are offered, only mincha. Why? Whose way is such that they will give only a meal offering? Ani, an impoverished person. Such great sacrifice was made by this poor person to be able to have enough resources to scrape together the meager resources to bring a meal offering. Hashem says, I accord it as if they offered their entire soul. The Nitziv sees it in different, uh, in a different light. Says the Nitziv, Lasha nefesh, milamdenu de mincha ba l'ratzot al hanefesh. The function of the korban mincha, says the Nitziv, is not about physical and economic poverty, but spiritual and psychological poverty. But an individual who needs to do something to fix an ailment of their spirit. He says he's basing himself on the Medrash Rabbah and Vayikra Rabbah and also on the Torah Konim. And he explains, based on this Pasuk from Sefer Shmuel Aleph, that Shaul, as is known, as is described by the Navi, had some kind of ruach ra'a, uh, variously translated as uh, some kind of a wicked spirit, some kind of a state, an emotional state that he would go in and out of, in which he was not altogether in control of himself, that rage got the better of him. There was a sense of despondency uh, that took hold, that lent itself toward aggressive behavior. And here says the Nitziv, what is his sit chabi, lest the, the Almighty have stirred you up against me. It's through the illness of the attribute of sadness and anger, rage and despair coming together. And therefore, the Yerach Mincha Lahasir Machla Zu Mincha. If we give the Mincha offering, that will be part of the way that we can try to mitigate the symptoms or somehow to abate. This state that you are in. He marshals another proof from Sefer Ma'achi, not for now, but then he goes on to say that the way this comes about, again, based on the understanding, traditional understanding, is not modern medicine, but the notion of the four humors, the doctrine of the four humors, that one of the humors is black bile. When it's out of sync, that causes itzavon, sadness. We could say today melancholy or even depression. And the idea here 
that each of the four humors, as they were known, when they are each out of, if they're out of whack somehow, that will cause some kind of emotional imbalance. We may have other ways from a medical perspective of understanding these things today, but I think the concept is exactly the same. And writes the Nitziv, In the days when there was a Beit HaMikdash, they knew how to calibrate whichever kind of mincha, the different kinds of mincha, should be brought as against whatever kind of emotional ailment was striking a given individual. That there is a spiritual component to our mental health uh, should go without saying. Uh, If there's a spiritual component to our physical health, of course, goes without saying. We always daven for refuat ha-nefesh and refuat haguf. Both of these things are needed. And we live today at a time without the korban mincha, obviously. Uh, but I think it is incredible that in Masachet Megillah on Daf Tet Zayin, we're coming to the holiday of Purim this year, it's a leap year, uh, we read in the Megillah that the day that Haman came with the royal horse in tow in order to get Mordechai to put him up on the horse and in the royal raiments to celebrate his... Uh, uh, his grandeur, and uh, to give thanks to him for what he had done for the royal crown, there is a description in the Gemara of what they were studying in the Beit Midrash. And Haman asks them, Bimai Askito, he asks the students while he's waiting for Mordechai, uh, what, did you, what are you learning now? Amrle, they said to him, Bizman shebein amikdash kayam, man demenadev mincha, maitile mile kumtze, desulta, umit kaper. In the days when there was a Beit Mikdash, a person who would donate even a meal offering that was a handful of solid, a fine flour, they could achieve atonement. And Muhammad exclaims in desperate in despair, obviously. He said, Amar Le, he basically said, My 10,000 talents of silver were just pushed aside by your handful of a meal offering. Isn't it amazing that of all of the 24 books of the Tanakh, there is none that is as rage-filled as Megillah Esther. The king is filled with anger and rage. It burns within him. The rage of Haman, the anger, the upset, the rancor. Even Mordechai and Esther in the doldrums of despair at certain points. The za'aka, a gedola umara, the great and bitter cry and moaning that can be heard among all the Jewish people that gives rise eventually to the irshushan sahala v'samecha. A sense of great joy, a sense of having been rescued of the nace that transpired on the holiday of Purim, a notion here that layhudim ha'ita or of simcha v'sasan vikar came to pass in their day. Where is the hinge? What's the moment? It's when Haman comes and he comes to the base medrash and he hears that Mordechai is teaching the students. Listen, you can go through tough times. Even a korban mincha Hashem wants from you. From that you can get a kapara. From that you can get closer to Hashem. Don't despair. And Haman realizes if that's how the Jewish people operate. I'm done for. We don't have a Korban Mincha today, obviously, but we do mention the Korban Mincha at the tail end of our tefillah, of our Amid Alif Hashem, each and every time. And may the Mincha offering of Yehuda and Yerushalayim be sweet and pleasing to you, Hashem, as it was in the days of old. And so may it be soon in our day, in the Binyan Beit HaMikdash, be Meher, be Wishing everyone a Shabbat Shalom and a Purim Sameach.